Today we're gonna to talk about your basket craft. We'll get right to it. Of course, I've got my beer today too. This one's from Land Wash. It's the prickly fish, which was the new one. It's delicious. Grab yourself a beverage, whatever you decide that you wanna drink. It's five o'clock somewhere, as I like to say. So here's our supplies. Today what we're doing is we've got our, our seagrass basket. And each one of you and your kits are gonna get a pom-pom maker. Mine is this color. Oh, it matches my shirt, cute. Uh, and some people also have a blue one. They're two different sizes, but it's not a big deal. So I'll show you how you can shave down your pom-pom if you want uh, just a smaller size. Uh, and you also have six pre-bundled pieces of wool for your pom-pom. And your pom-pom is gonna look something like that. That one's just a little bit rough. I should have shaved that one down a little bit, but it looks okay. So you've got six of these bundles. You've got one pom-pom maker per kit. You've also got one uh, acrylic craft paint. You've got sponge brush. And that's everything in the basket. Yeah, so what you're gonna need at home in order to complete this is just a pair of scissors, a glue gun if you have one. You can also use uh, just white liquid craft glue. That'll work too if you don't have a glue gun. And uh, a quick and easy paint palette. You can either use a little bit of, I like to use wax paper because then you can just throw it away. You don't have to use a whole lot. You're just gonna glob it on there. If wax paper is not really something that you have around, you can also use aluminum foil, not really a big deal either, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do in order to complete this craft is we're going to learn how to make our pom-poms. Each bundle of wool is the exact length that you need for the size of your maker. So we'll be able to open up each one and everyone has a string and you're gonna need that string to take your pom-pom off the maker. So don't throw that one away. We're gonna start, just unravel your wool. And that's how you're gonna start. So with a pom-pom maker of this nature, there's two sides. So, and there's four components. So it looks like this, it's round. And it has two pieces that open up on each side. So that's side one and then side two. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna put, use what whichever side you decide you'd like to start with. And this is one side of your pom-pom. So you're gonna take your wool, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. Like all my crafts, you do you. Whatever you think looks great, if you wanna modify it, go for it. So you're just gonna use your, your thumb finger, your thumb finger, your thumb, <laughs> to hold down your wool so it's got something to secure itself to while you wind it and you're just gonna overlap a little bit of wool so it stays secure. And then you're gonna keep going. Line up your little pieces so that you've got a nice even pom-pom. And see how I'm holding it there? Like hold it in your, your, your palm and use your, your index finger and your thumb to kind of secure it once you get that first bit of wool on. And keep going. So the idea is that they, your wool has been pre-cut to determine the size of your pom-pom for its maker. So I think there's about, I wanna say there's about 70 inches maybe per ball, well per side of a ball. So what I'm doing right now is about 70 inches of wool. And you keep winding it. Sorry if I'm going too fast, I apologize. Just keep winding it. And make sure that you wind it in an even fashion, like you, See what I just did there as well? You wanna make sure that your wool doesn't come out over your pieces. So when you're winding it, if you do like that, you're gonna have some trouble because you're gonna need to move your wool in. So that's what it's there for. It's a guide to kind of stay within. And this is honestly the most labor intensive part of this craft. This craft is super easy. Anyone can do this craft. Okay, so now we're at the end and we've got a little bit of wool. There's nowhere that you're able to tuck that in right now, so don't worry about it. Everything else is pretty tight on that on that little piece. So that little that little bit of wool that's not finished, 
we'll deal with that after. So just kind of roll that underneath, close up your pom-pom maker, and now you're gonna start on the other side. So again, unravel your wool ball. Keep your string that it was tied together with. And we're gonna start on this side now. So this is, it's good practice because you'll get to see it a couple of times. So just use your thumb and hold down your wool and then overlap it just a little bit to kind of secure it. See how I have that done? And then you're gonna keep going. Make sure your two pieces are together evenly. So you just keep winding like that until you got a nice solid arc of wool. And now we're at the end again. So as you can see, that one's a little bit longer, but that's okay, not a big deal. And now you're gonna close up your pom-pom maker. And this is the cool part. This is the part where you're gonna freak out a little bit, but I promise you it'll work. So you're gonna take your scissors. Um, the pointed end scissors are really good, the small ones, because what you're gonna to have to do now is see where there's a line in between the pom-pom makers. There's a space opening in both. So you're gonna to need to be able to get your scissors in kind of like that because what you're going to do now is cut the wool that's in between. And of course, it's never great when you're using someone else's equipment, <laughs> but we'll make it work. Okay, so what I've done is you're gonna put your scissors in between where both pom-pom makers meet. And that's how you're gonna cut your two sections together. So you can see the beginnings of it already here. Okay? And then, excuse me, just move to the other side and you're gonna do the same thing. Okay, so here we are. You might need to go back in and just cut a few strands if they're still connected. There you go. So you can see the beginnings now of what your pom-pom is gonna look like. Now comes the, the part where you save the piece of wool that was attaching the ball of wool together, right? Now we need to connect it together to make one pom-pom. So again, that's what the separation is between your two colored pieces. What you're gonna do is put your, see what I'm doing? You're putting your wool down in between. You gotta force it down between the two pieces and it's gonna come up on the other side. This is where you connect the two pieces of wool to make a pom-pom. If this isn't tight, all these little fringes are gonna to fall to the wayside. So you're gonna make a little knot, pull tight, do it again, pull tight. Leave those long for now, not a big deal. And now you get to open up your pom-pom maker. So open up the two color bits on both sides. And they actually come apart. So the two white pieces on your pom-pom maker actually separate. And there you go. So it's a little bit big and it's a little like uneven and, and kind of crude looking. So that's what I mean when I say you wanna go in with your scissors after and you're just gonna shave it down a little bit. Cut all your uneven pieces. If you want a smaller ball, you, what you're, you're just gonna keep going. See what happens if it's not super tight, they come out. There you go. So you're gonna do that six times to make three balls, because it's two, two small balls together to make one pom-pom, right? So there you go. And that's gonna be your embellishment. So now the nice thing about these, this is why we will use this for an other craft because you can use these then to make so many different things. Like that can be an ornament, it can be a tassel that you hang on like a knob of a piece of furniture or something like that. So you decide uh, for this craft, I'm just gonna cut them really short because of course we're gonna glue them on the side of your basket. But if you wanna use them for something else, you can leave them long and tie them up. 
but I'm just gonna snip mine down to the same length of the rest of the wool. And you won't know that it was even there. There you go. This is a great rainy day craft. It's pouring outside, so really, what else are you gonna do on a rainy day? Okay, so you can tear off a little piece of parchment paper or wax paper, or aluminum foil, whatever you want to use as your paint palette. We're going to take our paint. You don't need a lot of paint for this, so don't glob your brush up. Just take it slow, even if you've got to do a couple of coats, which you probably will. Uh, it's not a big deal. I like these because you, you don't have to, you know, buy a paint palette, that kind of thing easy to work with. Some people have bigger or smaller brushes, just the foam brushes. It's not really a big deal. It's just the way that the pack came for me. Like there was a, um, a set of brushes in a pack. Um, so talking about the basket and the way that it is, and I mentioned before that normally what we do is we use a bit of painter's tape in order to tape off so that you don't have any bleed for, to the next piece or the next level or whatever it is that you're painting. Uh, this is a nice sharp line the way that the basket folds naturally. So uh, when, when you get to that point in your brush, just kind of brush up so that you don't, like you don't glob it up and, and ruin the edge of the paint. This basket also, you don't have to paint the bottom if you didn't want to. Uh, I'm gonna paint as far into the circle as I can, just so that the color goes all the way underneath so when it's sitting you can tell that it's been painted all the way down uh, you don't have to you can even come to like the last chevron of the basket if you wanted to but if you decide that that's what you want to do I would recommend using painters tape to create a better line so that you don't have any bleed and it looks tidy and that's the whole point you really want it to look tidy uh, if you've never painted before, not a big deal. This is really easy craft. You can absolutely do this. We're using a matte paint, so there's absolutely no gloss to it. Uh, it's nicer for natural uh, materials, so that there's no gloss. And you're gonna kind of get that chalk sort of look to it without actually using chalk paint. Um, so yeah, just put a little bit on your brush. Doesn't have to be a big lot, just enough that it's even, you've got enough to play with, and you're literally just gonna paint it on. And it's up to you the desired consistency. Would you like, do you want more paint? Do you want less paint? Do you want to be able to see the wicker or the seagrass story through the paint? That's up to you. You decide how it is that you'd like to go. So just so you can see my edge, I'm literally just bringing my brush up to the edge of the basket and I'm gonna go back in and just tap it so that it is kind of a more definitive line. Don't overload your brush. I think that's the key probably. That's really the key to any painting. Don't overload your brush. That's gonna be a problem if you've got too much paint on. It's gonna be globby, it'll run slow and steady and extra layers if you need to. That's really the main thing about painting. Okay, so get started on your basket and uh, we'll see how it goes after all this. your first coat done all the way around. I'm just going to show you what it looks like on mine. So you can totally see the wicker through my paint, but that's okay. I'm gonna it's not the same consistency like in every space. space I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another coat all the way around uh, before I start to paint the bottom. So um, you, you can do the same. Like I said, it's up to you, like how the desired consistency that you want. I'm going to go around and just fill in some spaces so that it's uh, a little less translucent and uh, we'll speed up the video just so you can get a look at that. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and then we're gonna paint the bottom part of it. And I'll come back and I'll tell you how we're gonna do that with your parchment paper or your wax paper, okay? <laughs> time filling in the gaps in their baskets. Pretty straightforward craft, hey? Definitely a level one. Uh, we're going to talk about just the top 
edge now um, I know a few of you I know a few of you that will have questions about that because you want it to be perfect so I just want you to just have a look at the way that I've done mine no it isn't perfect but you'll see when we pop the top up that just the way that the edge meets the second we'll say the bottom half meets the second half with the edge that you won't even notice that it's not exactly perfect so the next thing we're going to do now is uh, how do we paint the bottom right because we want to get in there so you can leave it like this if you want there's still about like i don't know two inches probably that are not painted on the bottom if that's the way that you like it you could totally leave it that way not a big deal you do you however you like it the look then you just keep it as it is but i'm going to paint the bottom just so that it has a, a consistent flow all the way underneath and for this i'm going to use a little bit more wax paper so just tear off enough don't be, you know, wasteful with it. Tear off enough so that the diameter of the top of your basket sits on it so you don't ruin your countertop or whatnot. So it's gonna be a little hard to flip it over if it's still wet, but I'm able to hold on to the bottom piece. Not with her getting it on my arm. Thankfully, not on my cool colored sweatshirt. Cool. Okay, so like I said in the very beginning, I'm not going to paint the, the base part, but I am going to paint up to that part. So it'll require a little bit more paint because you're going to have to get into the folds. That's not a big deal though. You've got lots of paint left in your, your acrylic paint bottle. Uh, I can already see this is a good way to determine whether or not your paint is globbed up too. There's probably going to be a few pieces or places that have a little bit more paint than not. And it isn't a big deal, but it'll just take that section a little longer to dry, which is why I say to do uh, two light coats because you want it to dry fairly quickly. You don't want to have to wait to put your plant in it. You want to get it done so that you can have it out and already in display, right? Okay, so I'm going to just paint the bottom now. And once that's finished, we'll have to leave it as it is to dry. And again, I'm not taping anything. I'm just going to go up to the little base. over. Mine's probably not. Oh no, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Now this is this super easy part of your craft. I promise you. We're going to flip it up. See the line? I think we did pretty good. No painter's tape needed, which is wonderful. Okay, so next thing you're gonna do, you wanna attach your pom-poms. And of course, you're gonna choose, everyone's gonna choose the spot on their basket that looks the best for their pom-pom adhesion. Or if you've got a basket that has a blemish maybe on the top, that's another thing you could probably look for. Okay, so mine is right here. You can kind of tell because the weave in the basket is not as tight as it is on the other side. So that's where I'm gonna put my pom-pom, just to hide that imperfection. So this is where your glue gun comes in handy. And I'm just using a little piece of tin foil to catch the, the hot glue as it drips out. Nothing fancy. If I was home, I'd have my little ceramic tile, but gotta make do with what you have, right? Okay, so this is super easy. Your pom-poms are, are formed. I've got the three of them done. I've used my scissors to kind of cut them down and shape them a little bit better. They're almost identical, which is nice. We have a little one that's a little bit bigger, but can't really tell that. So you're literally just gonna put some glue on the back of your pom-pom and you're gonna stick it on your basket. You can stick it on in a line if you'd like. You can do a V, that's up to you. You can do one here, one here, one in the front, whatever you wanna do. You do whatever you wanna do. I might flatten it down a little bit just to get a better surface. And you're probably gonna want a good bit of glue. Make sure we got no hairs. 
and I'm just gonna go for it. So you can use your hand on the back just to press your pom-pom in so it's got something to, some pressure to attach itself to. You can fluff them up once the glue is dry. I think I'm gonna do mine in a row. I said before you can go now that you have a pom-pom maker you can even change the color of your wool like if you wanted to go and you want to get some turquoise you can do that or fuchsia or coral coral's really nice with gray and there you go so it looks like that so the next thing you can do I don't think my plant is really big enough but this is my intention to put my plant inside could probably even well that plant is a nice size might even just need a little rise inside to lift it up a little bit but that looks pretty cute and then you can put that on the floor or wherever you want to put it could be on the table could be a centerpiece move that out of the way and then this is your end resultant thanks so much for joining me again for this one uh, I love doing these crafts with you guys I know that this one was a little bit um, didn't really follow the schedule, but I appreciate you sticking with me for it. And uh, we'll be off with another one soon. Um, have patience with your crafts, only do what you can do. Everyone's is gonna look a little different, but that's the beauty of it all. So thanks so much.